Hello people, let us look at uh, ENT history taking. So let us say it is a year case. Okay, so if they give you an year case, then first you will do the uh, year examination, then you will do the nose examination, then you will do the oral cavity and the lymph node examination. Okay, if they give you a nose case, then you will check the nose, then you will check the ear, then you will check the oral cavity and the lymph nodes. If you get oral case like tonsillitis, you will check the oral cavity, and then the then the lymph nodes. Okay oral cavity followed by the lymph nodes, then the ear and the nose, okay, something like this. So, you should check all the systems and uh, whichever system is the main complaint that you will check first, right. So, basically guys, uh, uh, you will check, uh, take the person's name, age, sex, religion, education, occupation, address, income, right, all this you will do and then you will calculate the socio-economic status also, right. This is standard how you do for everything on earth. Then coming to presenting complaints or chief complaints. Here, what will it be, guys? If it is ear, you will have some chief complaints. If it is nose, you will have some chief complaints. If it is throat or something, you will have some chief, chief complaints. Let us look at these. Ear means they will have what? They will say they have some discharge from the ear. They will have some deafness or vertigo or pain, pain in the ear, tinnitus. They can have autophony, facial nerve palsy, fever, headache, all these. Okay. When it comes to nose, what can be the chief complaints? So, nose means what problem they will have, guys. Some nose discharge again. They can have obstruction of the nose, isn't it? Then they can have uh, some crusts, they can have headaches, sneezing, itching in the nose, disturbance of smell, they can have snoring, epistaxis, right? What else can be the chief complaints, guys? So, you got it, right? Then let us say throat. Throat as such, we will include everything, the pharynx, the uh, larynx, the neck, everything. Okay, guys, so there could be some swellings, right? Uh, tonsillitis, all those you can think of. So, now let us go to history of presenting illness. So, presenting... Presenting illness, you'll have to describe, you'll have to give all the associated features and all that you'll have to write. Uh, then uh, ENT history, you will have to take what exactly has he taken any treatment, what medication is he on, etc. Uh, ENT surgeries, history, treatment, all that you will take. Past history, you will take what guys, like um, if he is a case of diabetes or hypertension. What else will you ask? If he's taking any long-term medication, anything other than this, any surgery history, all that you will take here, right? Then... Uh, because if he's taking diuretics, etc., no, he can have some ototoxicity and he can have uh, deafness, right? So, you should find out all the drugs he's taking, etc. Now, coming to personal history, you will ask about his habits, smoking, tobacco, uh, if he's taking alcohol, etc., his lifestyle, food habits, bowel habits, etc. Here, you can even take menstrual history because, you know, otosclerosis and all pregnancy related, right? Uh, uh, some uh, things come with menopause, go with menopause, so you can get the menstrual history also. Family history also you should get if their people have in the family any deafness, congenital, hereditary, any problem, right? So, you can ask this. Then coming to social history, if you are asking anything about the environment, surrounding, housing, etc., you can ask that based uh, community medicine type. General physical examination, guys. Now, we are moving to general physical examination here. Anyways, you will do the well-oriented to time, place, person, uh, uh, well-nourished, all that you will write. Then temperature, pulse, respiratory rate, blood pressure, you will check. You will check palatitrix, uh, ictrus, cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy, edema, all this you will check, right? Now, coming to, let us say, uh, ear is the first system that you will be examining in that person. First, you will check ear, okay? Uh, based, whichever his complaint is, that system you will check first. Then, anyways, you will check the other systems, right? Uh, so, then you will check the nose. Then, you will check, after nose, you will check what? The pharynx, oral ca cavity, oropharynx. Then, you will check larynx. You just mention it. You may not check everything, then you have to check the lymph nodes, right? Head and neck. So, in this, whichever you will make like this right and left, right? And whichever is the pathological ear, like they are complaining about the left ear, let's say, then you have to present the left ear first when you're presenting, okay? And uh, you can check the left ear also first. What do you say? So, basically here, what and all you will check? You will check the pinna preauricular region before it and after it you will check, right? So, pinna uh, preauricular, postauricular you will check. So, guys, um, you will uh, see the size of the pinna, uh, la if it is a macrosia, microsia, if there is absence of pinna, anosia, then if there is any congenital uh, anomaly like Darwin tubercle, bat ear is there, or uh, antihelix is more prominent or what, you can check all that, right? Cauliflower pinna, what else, guys? Uh, low set ears, all this you should know. Then coming to pre-auricular region. You can look for the pre-auricular sinus, isn't it? Then you can see if there's any accessory tragus, etc. Coming coming to post-auricular region, you can look for scars, right? Previous scars, any edema is there, any swelling, fistula, any lymph node. You can palpate the mastoid process, right? Mastoid here itself, they are covering. All this you can do.
let's move on to trigger sign guys see basically you will put uh, just uh, press on the triggers and see if there is any tenderness there if it is there then it's an ec issue right so you will check it actually before the external auditory canal um, so you will check the external auditory canal without speculum and you will see what and all you can see you will write what can you see in the external auditory canal guys wax fungus fistula exostosis that uh, that is bone spur isn't it then uh, keratosis obturans malignant otitis externa because of pseudomonas isn't it then you will be able to see some green color uh, discharge or what then there are so many other things like foreign body extra you can see right now let's move on to tympanic membrane guys tympanic membrane you'll have to draw a diagram for both the ear okay so let us say right here i will draw right here we are very used to drawing kind of a thing not the perfect diagram something like this so you will mark everything and you will say basically what and all you will tell about it you will tell that uh, uh, how it is you should say color perforation if it is there you have to say and what type of perforation also is it a central perforation is this a subtotal perforation it's a marginal perforation is it an attic perforation all this you will have to say guys and you have to draw two diagrams remember one here okay I'm not drawing it perfectly and this should be a mirror image so something like this right so right and left you will draw and mark all the abnormalities then you will see what uh, you will have to say about the cone of light uh, handle of malleus anterior malleolar fold posterior malleolar fold you'll have to say then what else guys how's it going is it uh, becoming too much so uh, then all this you will check okay then coming to middle ear you will say not visible okay mastoid uh, how will you check the tympanic membrane guys you'll use bullseye lamp we already showed you the photo or not so this bullseye lamp will also help you check uh, the anterior uh, uh, you can do anterior rhinoscopy here they're checking the ear you can see how this uh, bullseye lamp will have a convex okay this has a convex uh, uh, and this has a concave mirror okay this has a concave mirror and this has a convex lens so the light will come here and it will reflect off this uh, head mirror right and it will uh, fall on this surface so it is go you're going to get nice light so basically it's just a way to put light on that place that's it okay it's not going to magnify or show you anything so basically uh, it is uh, bullseye lamp will have a plano convex lens so what type of bulb is it 100 watt white frosted bulb and then you will keep it in the left side of the patient you can see here it's on the left side of the patient it should be one foot away from the patient so that it will uh, otherwise it will heat his other uh, ear isn't it then you will just uh, that light will reflect off your uh, whatever you're wearing that is a forehead mirror right that will have a concave mirror and then the light will focus on the part that you want you focus it and then you just observe okay you can check the ear and you can also check the uh, anterior part of the nose where were we we are here so tympanic membrane open over you have to draw two diagrams wait good let's move on then mastoid three finger test guys one guys let's understand this so you will use which fingers the index finger the middle finger and the thumb okay so what they are saying is the index finger you will use to keep you will keep it on the mastoid process middle finger you will keep on the concha and using the thumb you will put pressure over the mastoid process the tenderness indicates mastoid emissary vein thrombophlebitis etc and the index finger which is on the mastoid if there is any tenderness it will indicate mastoiditis okay then the middle finger is on the concha if there is any inflammation of the antrum then the middle finger will tell you because concha will uh, is about the antrum right so you will be able to check the tenderness this is the three finger test then you can examine facial nerve guys where are we so basically you can check ask them to you know uh, you can check the creases on the forehead you can ask them to keep their eyes shut and ask them to open the, you know you can try to open the eyelids then you can ask them to, to uh, clench their teeth ask them to puff the cheeks right and then you can um, ask them to whistle what else even to check the intratemporal part and all what you can do guys you can do do taste check right the corda tympani all that you can check then uh, what else so all this you can do facial nerve examination lacrimation itself will be a sign of uh, proper facial nerve then you can check uh, stapedial reflex anyways this and all you won't do but taste test if you want you can do isn't it so you will do the examination of facial nerve then you will check uh, hearing test guys how you will do hearing test with tuning fork you'll do rene's test weber's test and abc you'll do on both the ears and report the uh, findings guys do not forget uh, practice this so that you don't waste time 
Guys, they can ask you the uh, parts of tuning fork, so you should know these are the prongs and this is the shoulder, stem and base, okay, and where will you strike it, anterior one third, right, and posterior two third, between this you will strike on your thinar, hypothenar, where exactly you will strike, you will have to find out. Then let us, in here, though the most important case that you will get is um, <clears throat> CSOM, okay guys. So in CSOM you have two types, you have the safe type and the unsafe type. So look at this, the safe type will be the tubotympanic type, it will be down, right? And the anticoantral type will be the unsafe type. So uh, which is uh, safe type, tubotympanic and anticoantral will be the unsafe type. Guys, focus here, this is important. So you will need to know if the perforation in the tympanic membrane is central, right? Then it will be a safe type, but if it is marginal, right? Or if it is attic, then it is going to be the dangerous kind, it is going to be more in the anticoantral region, isn't it? In this, uh, this starch is in, uh, intermittent and this one continuous discharge you will get, unsafe type. Then look at this pus, profuse pus is there in safe type, scanty but continuous, scanty but continuous is there in unsafe type. Which type of pus will you get in safe type? Mucoid, this is very very important because mucus goblet cells are there in the middle ear. So tuber to panic type will give you mucoid dis uh, consistency. Discharge. Guys, how is it going? Are you able to understand? So basically they will ask you CSOM uh, unsafe, uh, safe only. They will ask you the cases. So please note this. Okay. So here uh, foul smelling and purulent will be unsafe. Purulent will be unsafe. Okay. Foul smelling is unsafe. Continuous is unsafe. Scanty is fine. But continuously it's coming. It is unsafe. Okay. If the perforation is marginal or attic, then it is unsafe that will be an attico antral type okay so you have to look at all this okay what will be uh, there in uh, safe type in mastoid mastoid will be cellular but in the unsafe it would have become sclerotic isn't it source of inflammation inf infection will be your tonsils adenoids sinusitis no rhinitis all this deviated nasal septum we can cause but how will the source of infection be for anticoantral type, mastoid it seems, mastoid is the source. Look at the treatment guys for uh, uh, safe type, safe type you just treat the foci, you do tympanoplasty, that's enough. But here in the unsafe type you will have to do mastoid surgery. The prognosis is not good in the unsafe type. Now let's move to nose guys, here uh, over, now let us look at uh, nose and paranasal sinuses. Basically. Usually you can just do three uh, tests guys, the tip raising test. Uh, then you have the cortals test and the cold spatula test. This much you will be expected to do. Usually you will not be expected to do uh, any anterior rhinoscopy, etc. So, uh, you, but you need to know about those, okay? So, you will examine the external nose. What and all you will see that you have to write, right? You have to see the septum, uh, examination of the vestibule, then cold spatula test to know if there is any obstruction, right? Basically, you will just ask the, uh, you will close one nostril, ask the patient to blow through the other nostril. You will check whether the mist is forming. And then you will ask, uh, do the, for the other nostril, right? So, it will check the patency of the nose. Usually, the, it, if there is obstruction or partial obstruction, you can know. Then the cortals test, basically, you will pull the cheek away from the midline. The nasal valve will open. It will increase the airflow. Cortals test. So, these three tests you may be, may be uh, asked to do, okay? So, you will have to do tip raising test, cold spatula test and uh, what is this? Uh, cottles test okay then you have to give all your observations here then you need to know how to hold the studicum's nasal speculum guys you'll have to put it on your index finger on your left hand and your see the middle finger is outside and the uh, ring finger is inside isn't it so you need to know how to hold it and how to use it okay then you may not be asked to do it on a patient but you need to know how to hold it just check with your lecturers Moving to the paranasal sinuses you can just check for tenderness over the maxillary sinus you can check this over the canine fossa and then here you can see the test tenderness of, of the frontal sinus, you can check here, right? So you need to know this, you have to do this also looks like, okay? Just check this, then let's move on. Nasopharynx, uh, how will you do? We are not checking this, uh, if you are asked you can do. Oral cavity very easy, check, check the lips, buckle, mucosa, gums, teeth, hard palate, tongue, floor of mouth, don't forget, retromolar, trigone. So again, uh, write all the findings, then moving to Oropharynx, anyways, that anyways you will just visualize, isn't it? Irwin's Moor sign, will they ask you to do? Just find out, you will have to press over the tonsil and anterior pillar and get some exudate or something, right? If it's tonsillitis, just check if you are allowed to do this and if the patient is in pain or something. So, tonsil squeezed by what? Tongue depressor you will use. You will use the tongue depressor, pressing on the anterior 
the tonsillar pillar pus comes out in chronic fibrotic tonsillitis this is Irwin Moor sign okay you can examine the soft palate posterior pharyngeal wall base of tongue and vellicula anyways this you cannot see looks like unless you do uh, laryngoscopy and all that is it examination of larynx uh, if you want you can do uh, if you are allowed to do okay so this is what they are doing indirect laryngoscopy they are holding the tongue with a gauze so you need to know the procedure at least then Lymph nodes, uh, you will have to check, like we told you, after oral cavity, you will check the lymph nodes. Neck, guys, you look for any scars, swellings, then uh, carotid pulsation, uh, you may or may not be asked to check, just find out about that, okay? Then, guys, do the systemic examination, uh, RS, uh, CVS, parabdominal examination, CNS, you can write. RS, what will you write? So, just find out what you have to write for these and fill whatever you find, okay? Then, summary, you give the summary, give your provisional diagnosis, then investigations further, what will you order, guys? Let us see example for ear condition. Ear, let us say they gave you CSOM, then you can ask them to examine the mic, uh, middle ear if there is in case then any perforations, then you can examine the middle ear, right? Then you can do putone audiometry, then you can do um, uh, X-ray of the mastoid if you require, whether it is pneumatic, sclerotic, diploitic, you can check all that. Discharge, you can get, collect and do culture sensitivity. If it is a nose condition, guys, they came with a septum deviation or a polyp or something, then you will do x-ray of the paranasal sinuses if required. You can do this. Then probe test for the polyp, you can do uh, uh, to differentiate it from uh, hypertrophy turbinate, right? Then coming to oral cavity, if if there's any mass fibrosis and all, you could have actually palpated in the uh, your uh, examination itself. Anyways, then you do throat swab and you take the uh, organism for culture sensitivity like your covid then peripheral blood smear can be done to rule out leukemia, agranulocytosis, etc. Then you can do soft tissue, neck, lateral x-ray. You no, know, if it is a case of tonsillitis and you suspect there can be a parapharyngeal abscess or a retropharyngeal abscess. If you want lateral, lateral. If you want a front, front view, whatever. Just look at that. Then coming to treatment, how will you treat, guys? If it is uh, CSOM, safe type, how will you treat? You can do um, oral toilet, guys. Oral toilet, oral toilet, is it? <clears throat> there you do dry mopping, wet mopping, suction clearance, all that. Then you can do uh, culture sensitivity. What am I saying? Culture and sensitivity that you can do. Right? Then you can give uh, local antibiotics, local antibiotics, ear drops, you can give broad spectrum antibiotics, you can give like ampicillin, amoxicillin, till the culture uh, report comes, they are saying. Then you can give antihistamines, decongestants, you can give local nasal decongestants, you can give. Then you can protect the ear from water. Guess focus, what are we trying to cure here? The safe type of CSOM, right? Then, you will treat the septic foci, they are saying, and if required, you will do myringoplasty, tympanoplasty, whatever is required. Then coming to unsafe type, guys, you will do again oral toilet, uh, culture sensitivity, same broad spectrum antibiotics. Then you will do removal. You have to remove same as above, right? And then you will do a removal of any granulations, polyps. You have to do surgery like the uh, canal up procedure, canal down procedure, modified radical mastoidectomy, etc. Or radical mastoidectomy, etc. Okay. Then what if it is... Um, Nose condition, SMR, uh, septal deviation, you will do septoplasty, right? Septoplasty you can do or SMR, standard things, right? Then coming to nasal polyp, you have your standard functional endoscopic uh, sinus surgery. But nasal polyp, can you give any treatment and reduce it in size? Any conventional therapy can you give? And then uh, face surgery, then uh, you should also know about Cadwell look and its indications though it is an old thing which is not done. Then coming to tonsillitis, guys, if it is tonsillitis, what will you do? Let us look at tonsillitis. Uh, you will give them analgesics, antimicrobial therapy. Guys, uh, uh, basically what are they talking about? Penicillin here. Otherwise, they will give erythromycin if they are allergic to that. Then analgesics, they are talking about aspirin, paracetamol. Then you will ask them to take bed rest. Okay, this is what they are telling here. Then when it comes to chronic, diphtheria, if it is, then you'll have to try, uh, start treatment of diphtheria, guys. Then uh, let's move on to chronic. How will you treat chronic? So conservative treatment, uh, same thing, diet, health, uh, all this. Then you will treat if from where it is coming from. What is the source, right? Is it sinusitis? 
uh, what exactly is the problem infection of teeth that and all you will treat okay so you will treat the cause from where it is coming basically are you lost guys how are you feeling we are just at the end right we are done with all the history taking we are done with the presentation let's say we're just talking about the treatment now right where are we here you'll treat the cause then tonsillectomy is indicated when tonsils interfere with speech declutition respiration or if there's recurrent attack you will do tonsillectomy go to this tonsillectomy chapter and read all the indications so what are the absolute indications of tonsillectomy guys very important absolute indications you say and uh, relative indications absolute at least you should know recurrent infections of throat peritonsillar abscess right then tonsillitis which cause febrile seizures hypertrophy of tonsils which cause sleep apnea that is airway obstruction there is difficulty to swallow that is deglutition interference with speech happens then if you suspect any malignancy these are absolute indications of tonsillectomy can you tell the absolute indications of tonsillectomy guys absolute indication come on very easy if there is recurrent infections of the throat right seven or more episodes in one year five or more episodes per two years etc we will remember this one seven or more episodes for one year this guy has throat infection then uh, peritonsillar abscess they have in children um, tonsillectomy is done after you treat a peritonsillar abscess in adults only second attack only they are thinking about uh, tonsillectomy but children even one attack looks like they are doing it after uh, one and a half one month to one and a half month after this uh, peritonsillar abscess in children they are removing the tonsils tonsillectomy they are doing then if there is any febrile seizures with this tonsillitis then they are doing tonsillectomy focus guys important then hypertrophy of tonsils causing this large tonsils okay in this guy's mouth see this guy's mouth is so big but still his tonsils are so big so this hypertrophy of these tonsils they cause sleep apnea there's difficulty to swallow there's interference in speech just remove the tonsils suspicion of malignancy inside these you suspect there's malignancy right a lymphoma in children and epidermoid carcinoma in adults so you have to first do biopsy right an excisional biopsy lymphoma in children epidermoid carcinoma in adults biopsy you will do and if you suspect malignancy remove it these are the absolute indications of tonsillectomy okay then there are some um, where are we wait relative indications guys like if these people are diphtheria ca carriers streptococcal carriers chronic tonsillitis with bad taste or halitosis if they have recurrent uh, streptococcal tonsillitis and they have valvular heart disease then you can imagine which way it is going isn't it so they want to remove these tonsils as a part of another operation also they can do that is the third thing they are mentioning anyways guys uh, here we just wanted to talk to you about tonsillectomy because it is a part of the treatment right so we are done here with history taking.